Hey y'all, it's Michelle from The Scattered Scrapper. Welcome to my channel. Today is day 24 of Scrappoween. It's Trick or Treat Tuesday. I have my picture here of my daughter with this display here in our neighborhood. If you couldn't tell, here she is. <laughs> Hiding in amongst all of these other um, pumpkin head scarecrow type things. I have some supplies picked out and I have the stuff for our technique today. So let's get started. The technique that I'm going to be doing today is called frottage or art rubbing. And I saw a video on Vicki Booten's YouTube channel about this. And all I'm doing is taking a white crayon and I have a stencil underneath my paper here and I rubbed it all over. And now I'm just going to take these Distress Oxide um, inks and just kind of rub it all around in different places. And you can see where the white crayon is, the, the ink is not being deposited on the paper. And so I'm just going to use all of these different colors here to cover my entire paper. And I was thinking as I was doing this that instead of having one big huge crayon, um, if I'd have maybe broken it in half, then it would have done a little bit more for this pattern. Um, you can you can use anything that rubs an impression. If you remember, maybe in school when you were little in elementary school and I know when, when I was little, we would put like money up underneath paper and use a crayon to um, rub over it and get an impression of the coin on the paper. And this is, this is exactly the same thing. So anything that has a raised surface or like an em, uh, embossed or debossed or, or whatever that um, has a pattern that when you rub the crayon over it, it leaves the wax of the crayon. Um, it's going to form that shape or that pattern and it's going to act like a resist. And that, that was one thing that Vicki Booten said in the video is to make sure that your crayon is wax based. And I just pulled out a, a, um, a white crayon from an old Crayola box that I have from when my kids were little and I'm going through and just kind of trying to make my my splotches a little bit more loosey-goosey and not just round splotches and I'm going all the way to the edges so I got my little craft mat out here so I wouldn't get ink all over my cutting mat and I'm just going through and making sure that they're nice and blended. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little spray bottle here and try and spray some big splotches. And that's going to activate the oxide um, from, from the distressed oxide. And I'm using this paper towel to pull up some of the color. And I think if I had of put the color on a little bit, I guess maybe heavier, made it a little thicker because you like you can see where the that purple is. You can really see how it has come come up. And I kind of wishing that I had spent a little bit more time and made just some layers, a little bit thicker layers of the color. But um, Vicki said in her video that you want to be careful when you're rubbing the ink on that you don't rub the wax away. So I was trying to not be too heavy handed. <laughs> but here I am going to build up some paper layers for my photo. And I went ahead and trimmed my background paper and matted it with some black cardstock. This is a, a little bit of a thinner white cardstock that I started with because I wanted to make sure that when I did the crayon rubbing, it, it wouldn't 
not be so thick that it wouldn't get the pattern. So I'm just going to use this holograph paper here with the skeletons. They're so cute. And then this, I'm not sure what you would call that, like a dark turquoise background paper with all the little um, pumpkins and little ghosts and bats and everything on it. And now I'm just going to go through the die cuts and pull out some things that I think that I can use. I don't end up using everything that I pull out, but I use a pretty good many of them, so I'm really excited about that. The more stuff I can put on a layout, the better. <laughs> and here I'm going to just cut me a little tag. This is one of the things I really like to do is just take a tag and then use some scrap paper and make another tag. So I have this orange paper with these little triangles on it. And then I have this tag from the cut apart paper, but it's, it's cut weird. One side is bigger than the other and I'm trying to even it out. But if you've watched any of my videos, you know, I, I'm not good with the measuring. And so I messed it up. <laughs> But not really, it's not hard to fix, so I'm just going to use the flat end that doesn't have the little corners cut out of it and find the center and and um, make some more, um, just remake the tag just skinnier, if that makes sense. So I know I have got the layers down that I want and... I'm going to tuck these tags up underneath the photo. And since I have tags, I want to make sure that I have something in those little tag holes. So here I've just figured out where I want to put my banners. And if I wanted to use that um, die cut there that says Spooky Night, which would have been perfect, but I wanted something a little bit more rounded since everything is kind of straight edged right now. So I chose to use this pumpkin that says boo to you instead. And I'm just lightly going around um, the edges with my black soot. I think that's what it is. Let me look. Yeah. Black soot distress ink uh, because everything has um, white at the edge because of the core of the paper being white. And I'm I wanted them to kind of stand out a little bit more and not be quite so flat. And, and just adding that little bit of black around the edges really helps them to pop. And then in order for this to even pop more, I'm going to put it up on some of my foam here. And that, this is one of my favorite things to do is just to put a little um, piece of foam on the back of die cuts and stickers. I do have the the foam tape type stuff, but sometimes those are a, a little bit too thick for what I'm wanting. So that's when I like to pull out the little sheets of foam and use those. And then here I have just tied some bows with some of that Baker's twine and put it in the holes of my tags. And I'm just looking at the puffy stickers to see if there's anything I want to add. And I put that little puffy sticker that says eek on it up in the corner of my picture. And then I have this cardstock sticker here that says Fright Night that I'm going to put over here in this. I'm kind of building a cluster. It's, it's not really, it's not really a, a um, I guess... It's more, it's more of a stick and plonk cluster than it is building a specific cluster, if, if that makes any sense. <laughs> and then I decide, well, I really need to find a place to put my title. And I want to title this Happy Halloween because this was on Halloween night. This was the last stop that we made. I usually try and get a picture of my girls with this um, corner in our neighborhood, the person that lives there always decorates this corner so big and it's so fun 
and I just can't seem to figure out how to put my title on here. I did try and make a base for it with that black paper and making a, a banner, but that didn't quite work. Um, I knew I wanted to use these holograph um, pumpkins and the stars and the moon. And I'm still trying to figure out how to get that Happy Halloween on there. And I'm, I'm just not finding it. It's not working for me. So I kind of put that aside and I'm like, I want to add more in this upper left-hand corner. That one little pumpkin was just not enough. So I got out the thicker sheet again and pulled out just a pumpkin instead of a jack-o'-lantern to kind of balance that out a little more. And I'm still looking, what else can I use? Because I can't figure out my title. So I put on this Boo Eek puffy sticker. And I'm getting kind of discouraged about it. But I do find this cardstock sticker that says Happy Halloween. And that was my older daughter's hand. She had come in and was talking with me. And we were discussing what else the layout needed. Because I felt like it just wasn't working for me yet. And I tried the Happy Halloween here at the bottom of the photo. And I looked out. It didn't stick. So I could move it around. And we were discussing places where it could be. And she's telling me I need to put something up in the upper right corner and the bottom left corner. And I was like, well, yeah, but it's a, more of a diagonal um, embellishment composition. So I really didn't want to put anything in those two corners. And then I decided I'm going to put a doodly border. I mean, you just pretty much cannot go wrong with a doodly border. And we both decided, yep. That's what it needed. It just needed that little bit of extra to kind of keep the background from looking like it was just floating off the edges. And I'm finishing off here with some iron, iron gate, I think, of the Distress Mica Stain. And that is going to do it. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if you decide to try this technique. I really like it. I, I'm thinking I need to try it again with a different kind of stencil. But I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.